Gavin O'Shea, as my name, company is Green Build. I'll be going through a series of slides which I've entitled Are You Cold in Your Home This Winter? Work in all types of houses, terraced, semi detached, detached, old houses, new houses, either doing energy ratings or testing them and helping the people upgrade their houses. Now, we're calling this Are You Cold in Your Home This Winter? You could also call it uh, Do Something But Don't Do Just Anything. And the reason for that is people would sometimes have it in their head, you know, gee, I, I need new windows, I'm cold in the house. When actually, if, if they got someone to look at the house professionally, you might discover that for less money, you could do more to save energy. If you're cold in your house, well, why are you cold? The short answer is because your home is losing more heat than it's gaining. So what's your solution? Really, either you reduce those heat losses or you add more heat gains to get the balance right so that you won't be cold. And in the line of work I'm in, I very seldom would recommend adding heat gains as the first step, and I'd always recommend reducing the heat losses. So where, where does that take us then? Well, it takes us into the fabric of the building. These would be the main heat loss areas. Your windows, certainly, your roof, your walls, your floors, and what you're losing through drafts and through the, uh, the flues and the chimneys. So I'm going to look now at each of these areas, looking at floors first. And I suppose most of us have one of, one of two types of floor. Either we have a solid floor, which is quite hard to fix once it's down, being a concrete floor mostly. And really the, the main way that you get around that is very thin insulation under the floor unless you're prepared to dig it out, which is really quite a large job. Or if you have a timber ground floor, you can draft seal it and insulate it now you can also put down a very good carpet with very good underlay and really fix it around the sides and that works quite well without raising any floorboards. But for the best job you'd raise the floorboards and insulate it. These are your floor joists, insulation in between, a, a, a breathable membrane so that any moisture won't get trapped in under the floor and then an airtight membrane above that that's also breathable as well and that will be fixed to the wall so you won't get drafts up around the edge and it will be nicely insulated. For the solid floor, here's an example of a renovation using aerogel. There's the old radiator from the wall. And aerogel isn't, isn't a half inch thick. And again, it's going on battens and there'll be timber floor put across that. Very good insulation. More modern houses have damp proofing layers underneath the floors typically. Now, some older houses don't have that. And you may not notice the floor is damp, but there could be dampness permeating through the floor and evaporating into the room without you really ever noticing it. Just small amounts, but what some people find is when they do cover over an existing solid floor with insulation materials, especially if it's like a reflective foil uh, insulation board of this thick, suddenly their walls start getting damp. And it's because the moisture has been pushed away by the insulating boards onto the walls and it's starting to come out the walls. In terms of your attic or your roof, I suppose my, my usual advice is you insulate as much as you possibly can afford. Um, and that would be, at some point, putting more and more insulation becomes non-cost effective because the extra benefits you gain become less and less and less from more and more insulation. So what, what you'll find if you do the sums is about a foot of insulation, if you use the woolly types of insulation, is it's about the maximum that you put when it's still paying for itself. Beyond that, you, you can put more, but it won't really ever pay for itself. Now, here's an example. An attic that's reasonably well done with 200 mil. So in this case, I would be saying to the person, you could really think about another 100 mil, another roll. And this insulation is going across, and you'd recommend it to go up and down the next roll so that any gaps and cracks in the existing insulation, first of all, it should be pushed back to fill all the voids and then the new stuff put over it. You don't have to use the woolly insulation in the attic. You can use insulation boards. And for example, if you want to floor out your attic, um, well, you can just use normal flooring once you've counter battened to a sufficient height, or you can use this because it's very easy. It's just clipped together and you put it straight down. Have a look in your, in your attic. If you've got an uninsulated water tank in your attic with no cover on it, uh, regardless of heat loss, I would certainly be insulating that because that may well freeze and crack someday. And the cover, on it will prevent condensation from rising out of it. Here's another example of what can go wrong if, if you do it yourself or if you get somebody to install that, that doesn't really know what they're doing. In this particular house, there was a slopey part of the attic before it became flat. 
and the gentleman stuffed the insulation down the slope which is great it's nicely insulated now but unfortunately that was the ventilation channel for the attic so the condensation that was coming out of his uncovered water tank and just from living in the house below because it permeates through the ceiling gets into the attic when it's cold that vapor in the air condenses and becomes moisture on your roofing felt and it can end up rotting your timbers so if you look at the, sh the, the state of the timbers there they, they don't look great moving quickly on to walls there's uh, several types of insulation on the market at the moment you've probably seen ads for all of these or you've maybe thought about them if you're thinking of doing your own houses blowing insulation dry lining and external insulation probably the most common one on the market at the minute is the bonded beads which is like your polystyrene your aero board and it just comes in loose beads it's perfectly good also the um, the wool type insulation in a shredded format that gets blown in or foam gets blown in any of them suitable in their own environments but I would always look to see the certificates for the product before you get it used in your house and I'm only talking about these in terms of where you have a cavity wall insulation with one layer of blocker brick a cavity and then another layer of blocker brick I'm not talking about the cavity block where you've got holes in the block so perfectly good but what you have to be aware of this doesn't reduce what you call thermal bridging so there's going to be points in your walls if you do have that cavity wall construction where maybe a block has to span across the wall or maybe a piece of metal or a lintel over a window and those are all heat loss areas more so than the rest of the wall and blowing in this insulation doesn't help those heat loss areas in fact they become worse now because heat is a bit like water tries to find the easiest way out now it finds it can't go through the cavity anymore because it's full of insulation so it'll make an extra effort to get out those uh, thermal bridge areas and if you are thinking of getting it done in your house just be aware that cavity walls that are built in the last 30 or 40 years they basically mostly look like this if they have insulation in them block work is what they call returned around the reveal so if there's a tiny gap if you're lucky there's a tiny gap which is filled with insulation mostly meets the other block so that's just a direct channel for heat loss through the wall uh, you get these mortar snots as they're called and you get gaps behind the insulation so part of the insulation isn't up against the inside wall which is where it should be and no amount of blowing in beads is going to push that board back despite what the people the people would tell you yeah that the pressure will get up a bit to blow it back but really it it would want to be very loose in the wall to be to be pushed back so again cavity wall insulation quite good less good if you're filling a wall that already has some insulation in it now if you do have the nine inch hollow blocks I'd really think seriously about not doing that now if you're thinking about windows and doors if you are replacing really ask the manufacturers are the windows rated and you want to see a rated certificates there's two, two certificates are kind of semi common on the Irish market at the minute NSAI National Standards Association and the BFRC which is the British Fenestration Rating Council if you do see one of these certs the main number that you're looking for is this number if it's a minus number what it means is it loses more energy over the course of a year than it gains so some of the best performing A rated windows have a positive number here which means over the course of a year you're actually gaining more energy through that window than you're losing and the other number because I do a lot of air tightness testing the other number I really like is this effect of air leakages how, how much draft would come in through that window and really that number should be as close to zero as possible some of the things you're looking for are those air tightness figures the U value which is a measure of how fast the heat will transfer or the rate at which heat transfers to the outside from inside the lower the U value the better especially low conductivity spacers that's a, just an example of a nice timber window that I like from OptiWin very good quality a pivotal point no matter how good your window is if it's not installed well you've just wasted your time and money on the window about 10 years ago aluminium windows were state of the art and this, this is an aluminium window you can see there isn't much condensation on the window there's a little bit at the bottom that's because cold air drops warm air rises so the, cold, the bottom part of the window is always going to be the, the coolest part and that's typically where you get condensation on a double glazed unit as well it's at the bottom because the spacer at the bottom which is usually aluminium in most cases is also allowing an awful amount of heat to go out so it's getting colder so condensation is occurring there